Sorry, Monia isn't here. The recording of the meeting today is the 7th of October, 2024. Of Two women years matter. after the attack. A year after the famous day, which has thrown the world again in a deeper hole than it already was. Yeah. So don't think about it now. We do the... the, the, the but check. we have to own and, it, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to start, Gina? And uh, you need to know that uh, I know Gertrude for a long time from the Integral Movement. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Well, 2014. Oh, yeah. wow. I think I've known Heidi not quite that long, but maybe half of that. It oh, seems yeah. from when yeah. I started my business. I started my business eight years ago, so close to that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I've actually been to see Heidi at her yeah, wonderful exactly. Paradiso. So how's that? <laughs> yeah, I still have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we met also. We met in the conferences, and so we know each other also in person. In how do you say in flesh? <laughs> yeah, in the flesh and blood. <laughs> flesh yeah, and blood. or yeah. in the flesh. Same yeah. thing. But uh, yeah, we met at the first um, at the. Um, online course, uh, Ken Wilber's online mm -hmm. course. And it was so condensed and so packed that we said, okay, let's meet once a week to oh, unpack nice. all this. And so for a year or so, we had the weekly calls with Mark still. Yeah. Lovely, yeah. And Lovely. then 2016, we met and we had a mm, nice nice. Lunch. <laughs> yeah. with Dorothee and Rito, yeah. Nice, nice. Well, um, as a way of introduction, I'm calling you from uh, Victoria, British Columbia, mm -hmm. which is located uh, on Vancouver Island, which is a long island off the west coast of British Columbia. Uh, I, I, I would show, I don't think you could see because I think it's too bright, but mm -hmm. I actually overlook America because the island across from me is the San Juan Islands, which the British lost to the Americans during the War of the Pigs. Okay, so <laughs> um, Victoria, if you're not familiar with it, is a very temperate uh, climate in Canada. Uh, and uh, so people come here and they can, they're free. They don't have the same burdens where we have a lot of snow and a lot of cold. We do have a lot of rain in the fall, but for the most part, this is a very good place to be an older adult. Uh, because it's easier to be active safely all year round. Uh, I am, in terms of background, my background is in psychology. I'm married. I have two adult children, one in fashion in Vancouver, and the other is a lawyer married to a British girl in the UK. So I have family that has sort of in different places. I, I was, uh, for my profession, I was originally in our Royal Canadian Navy as a personnel administration officer. Um, and then due to the conflicts of being married service couples, uh, I got out of that and then became an expert in change management. So I've worked for myself and for major consulting firms. Uh, in terms of uh, area of interest, uh, we sail <laughs> with the sailboat, so we sail. And uh, I'm currently going to school. Uh, I've returned to school after more than 20 years since my upgrade course. Uh, to do a master's degree in social dimensions of health. So I'm looking at mm -hmm. older adults and how, how do you motivate older adults who are not lifelong learners to engage in learning? So that's me. Wow. <laughs> it's tough, I could tell you. And are it's, you a harp player? Is that oh, a harp? Yeah, there we go. yeah, I, yeah. I said so. Wow. Yeah, yeah thanks. I just One day you have to, have to play for us. <laughs> I was telling Heidi, I'm don't like playing for other people. I find it too stressful. Yeah, we don't have to record it. We just okay. Do it for us. <laughs> oh, phew, that makes all the difference. <laughs> yeah, I guess it'll be so. my first worldwide appearance, though. So you know, yeah, there's a yeah. Of that. <laughs> I get that. But it's okay. so, I mean, it's just so beautiful to have this. Like, just to have that in the room is makes mm -hmm. a difference. It really does. Yeah, we have a piano too. So, oh. mm -hmm. yeah, my husband's actually. I don't have a lot of talent. I can learn, but my husband's actually the talented musician. So, good. Not me. Yeah. Good. good. <laughs> okay. I'm so, Gertrud from Germany. 
And so really in the middle, uh, 70 kilometers north of Frankfurt. And I'm a mother of three adult daughters. And since May, a grandmother of five. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And my daughter, the one with the baby, they just got married. So, so the whole summer I was with my daughter before birth and then three weeks after so it was really like uh, yeah to be in that special realm was really really amazing so mm -hmm. to, i mean if you have a newborn on your chest you don't need anything else <laughs> it's just or babies babies everybody get a baby <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so two have two and one is one and okay. um ah, i'm i'm in the trade of coaching and um yeah in the the i would say in the integral consulting business consulting so it's called we flow and it's born out of the integral realm and, and I'm a trainer in that as well. And appreciative inquiry, I don't know how much that says something for you. So I'm a, yeah. Nice. Practitioner and trainer in that as well. And I have a new addition. Last year, I became a fitness coach. Oh my goodness, good for you. Yeah, so it was, I just wanted to lose some weight and... Um, ended up with that degree so it's it's uh yeah and it really transformed my body to do resistance training and things yes. like that so mm -hmm. formally i can teach that as well nice or at least consult that and um i have a new new addition so talking about lifelong learners i think when i'm 90 i will still do something <laughs> and learn something new and this is called instant change which is like nor neuro uh, science and and um quantum physics together to really make profound change yes yeah so that's that's me lovely so I will uh, say something too to round the, the circle. Yeah, sure. But I already have intuited what the topic could be. Lifelong <laughs> learning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, as you know, I'm Heidi or Adelheid. Some people prefer to call me Adelheid because they say that it's important that you use your real name for the universe and I don't know what. And so... Uh, oh. I didn't use it so much because my father always, when he was angry with me, he called me Adelheid. Adelheid. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was a little bit, you know, like this. Not very appreciated. But um, I, I'm fine now with the name. I, only Heidi is much more, it's much easier. People understand it is more easily, especially when you are in a different country, you know, Adelheid, how, how, what, you know, <laughs> while Heidi for the famous uh, Swiss Heidi, they know uh, something, the sound, and they know that that can be a name. So and what's they, the meaning uh, of Adelheid? Uh, Adelheid, I don't know. Uh, Adel is a nobility and Heide, I don't know what it is. So okay. you can look it up. It's something very, uh, you know, uh, nobility. I'm no. Oh, I'm I'm with you. I think you are. <laughs> <laughs> you live in Paradiso. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But that uh, I have created that. It's not be before birth. So <laughs> I see that I'm very very dark. But it looks fine, Heidi, from here. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah it looks good. Mm -hmm. Good. So talking about my uh, present life is I have restarted to sing a little bit. I have uh, known a, a pianist, a real artist who forgets everything everywhere and, <laughs> and things like that. 
but we start also to do some improvisations together and some leader, although it's different, difficult in my opinion to, we, we will see how we go on because he doesn't understand German and for, for leader, you should a little bit know what what the text is about. So even for the for the a company, but it's nice. Uh, so the rest, I did a lot in the garden. In two weeks, more or less, I will start with the olive harvest. It's still very much satisfying to me to be out. And today I have a guest here. We did the fire with the olive branches, which I had already oh. cut and had a grill on it. And so my life is very quiet. In, in many senses, apart, if I didn't have a computer and watched a lot of things. Also, before we came in, uh, I watched quantum physics, um, Anton Zeilinger, uh, uh, and also another Warnke. I saw many things from Warnke. And I'm very interested in these things. That's also because lifelong learning, it seems to be a common a common uh, connection, but I also watch things about what is going on in the world. And that's, um, you know, if I didn't do that, I I could be perfectly <laughs> happy here and not noticing what is going on in the world. So, but I prefer to be aware of what is going on. Um, yeah, I think it's for the moment uh, is, is enough. I was a coach and I was a uh, uh, a voice teacher and voice developer, let's say, uh, for many years. But um, I'm not really, so I don't like it anymore. I like if somebody really wants to discover the voice, you know, but like singing lessons, I, no, it's, it's, it's boring. So let's jump over into the topic. Why do you think we should learn. I mean, I know it from, from Gina because we did an interview and I have published it on the website, the wisdomfactory.net. Uh, so let's talk about it. Do you want me you to know, find, you, found your name of noble um, nature? So of noble like nature. You yeah. see, I told you. Yes. <laughs> We already knew the answer. <laughs> it's, it's missing the crown and the nice dresses, you know. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, you dress more natural. You, you start, Gina, and then okay. uh, then we go around. So I, I would say that I'm I'm fortunate in that I like to learn. I can I'm happy to self direct my own learning. Uh, I am curious. And so because that curiosity, I usually just let it take me where I will. Um, what I felt after my formal education, looking back on it, is that it was always a little too narrow. It wasn't very interesting. That was repetitive. There was only one right answer to everything. And particularly in Canada, I found the curriculum to be uh, very narrow. So, you know, we're only, a little bit over 150 years old really and yet we focus on that as if that's some uh, great accomplishment so what i'm finding is that uh, I, I view learning uh, as a child that it's too structured and view learning as an adult where you're free to follow and that can take you deeply or you can just skim over all sorts of stuff but uh, you know in my profession when i was in the navy we had to do training all the time and professional development and same thing as a consultant. But my learning in areas like grief and aging uh, were really around personal experience uh, that I wanted to better understand aging. I wanted to better understand grief. And so then I spent a lot of time in that. And now I'm just learning about learning and aging. And I'm learning a lot, which is kind of fun because there's all sorts of stuff about aging I didn't know. But my prof is pretty good about giving us some interesting stuff. So it's, it's I would say it's a, a curiosity thing, like just how you look at the world, you don't, you're not challenging the world. I'm just trying to appreciate the world and the people who are in it with me. So I'm gonna say, that's it. <laughs> Didn't you have that with Mark together, conscious aging? 
Heidi? We did this for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did the, uh, it's still, the website is still on, uh, integral aging, I think it is called. Integral uh, aging? I think like so, yeah. but yeah. I, I sort of hardly ever go there. Maybe I put your interview there because it's it's sort of, it was more Mark's interest. And um, yeah, also it, I can't deny that I'm aging. I mean, I, I feel it uh, walking up the, the hill sometimes. Uh, mm, and I'm much more cautious with where to put my feet. <laughs> Things like that, they are undeniable, but altogether it's it's fine. Do you want to give your uh, motivation for the curiosity, uh, Gertraud? Or for you can the go. Journey? You can go first. Okay. Yeah, for me, I think lifelong, I was very curious. And in childhood, it was a negative thing. I was blamed for being uh, curious and wanted to learn, to see that, to learn that, to learn that. No. But at least I was able to go to a choir and learn singing and uh, singing in the choir. No, that was not yet singing, but that was the only thing I could do. It was also the time because I wanted to play tennis. I wanted to uh, all sorts of uh, skating and things. But it was a time where my parents didn't have money for things like that. I wanted to play piano. We didn't have a piano. There was no place to to put it in the in the flat and things like that. Uh, my sister later she could do everything, but um, I couldn't. So the um, the learning impulse was very much oppressed. Then at school I learned for a while. I learned the viol violoncello. I got the instrument from the school and fifteen minutes of lesson a week. <laughs> <laughs> So it was not that I arrived very far. Yeah, and then it was, you know, what do you study? I wa wanted to, then already I wanted to study singing. And that was not an option. So I studied other things. And I became a little curious with linguistics when I changed after a while from other subjects to linguistics. That was quite interesting. But then I went into singing after the exam. And then I became curious why when I sing alone, for instance, no, I was also very nervous always. And then I felt also inadequate. And um, that was the reason why I came to Italy, because I thought this is not my voice. I have more potential. I, I knew it, you know. And so I came here, studied a little bit and then learned it by myself. And in the meantime, all other sorts of curious, curious, uh, for instance, how to do the gardens. I'm I'm not perfect in these things, but uh, I stop when I, when it works. Then I stop. But so many interests I I have, and um, and the only thing I went to the bottom was singing, teaching singing, teaching how the voice works. That's the only thing I really think I have a good competence. Then I did all the coaching things, the the the, the counseling school and everything. Yeah, I, I know how to do that, but uh, it's not as much embodied as the, the singing thing. Yeah, and now since the Corona thing, I got very curious in what is going on in politics. I never was before. And then I for how do you say that digging down the, the rabbit hole mm -hmm. you know, and this this puts you into a, 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 a sucks you in and and so and so many things i didn't know not at all you know nobody taught us at school or wherever and then i'm like oh no of history and many things so i'm sort of learning not very diligently in the, in the sense that i'm only listening and then I confuse where did I hear this where did I hear this but it's more the overall picture which I came to the conclusion it's everything different than I thought mm. <laughs> in this uh, in, 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 in life and in, in, in the state and in the in the situation of the world and everything but this is outside and inside the curiosity to explore states of consciousness Mm -hmm. And uh, 
see what is going on in my body when I have strange feelings and so on, strange sensations and, you know, uh, for instance, uh, how to to lower the heartbeat, which is quite good with um, when I'm anxious or something. Now I feel the heart is going loop with the breathing exercises and so on. So, yeah, this is uh, very much interest in this, and I'm learning learning these things also. I'm not so much interested anymore in, yeah, in for instance, I I never was in watching movies or, or or reading novels and things like that. More in in getting information like. I don't know, did we talk here in this, uh, with you certainly not, but Chris Beige, LSD and the Mind of the Universe. I don't know if I've ever no uh, mentioned that. That's really great. Um, he is, um, uh, he was a um, professor in comparative religions and did in the 90s, he did this 20 year long uh, journeys with LSD into the visions, which he had given, been given then it's Paul. And I have to say, I say it often that this book then is gave, gives me the confidence that at the end, everything will be good, mm -hmm. but not good in the sense that I might survive or somebody else, but that life will survive and uh, the transformation, because there is an, a chapter in this book, it's called uh, The Great Awakening. Mm -hmm. And um, there is very clear that what is we are going to, through as humanity has been horrible in many, many ways. He says he has died many, many deaths mm -hmm. and, and witnessed uh, horrible things in these sessions. But in The Great Awakening, then it comes out that the humans who will be still left will be completely different. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's it. Now my evaluation is they will be like Jesus uh, uh, gave the, um, the teaching, but it was a wrong, wrong time, you know? So yeah, things like that. I'm interested <laughs> in learning. So now after the long speech of mine, I give over to you, Gertrude. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just thinking where where my drive to to learn to learning come from, and I I'm not sure. I think I was born that way. <laughs> so like, um, for example, others. Uh, talk about where they want to go on a vacation or what trip they want to do my trips are mostly inward so like to to learn to uh yeah and and and, and experience so i have i i can really like go with my mind into the the details um and 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 be very specific and granular but mostly i'm more interested in in really like my experience in that and i think i've always uh like i'm coming from nutrition and home economics and and i was interested in people already there to to learn consulting, nutritional consulting and things like that. So right after my studies or my seventh, um, like in the exam, my, my seventh subject was, was consulting. And uh, what really brought me to, to come in and 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 do the work and and start uh, do this therapy whatever things uh, self discovery was when my marriage broke down and and I knew when I go into a next um, relationship I bring myself with me and. Then I started with my new relationship, which is my now husband. 
um, we started the journey together. So in a, in a um, it was Gestalt. Mm -hmm. And out of this, I, I think I always learned better or so when I come to a wall and I hit a wall and, and there's no way out or so there's something that there is some like somebody tells me a friend goes to that workshop or whatever that that might be then uh then there is something where i can yeah take over <laughs> go over that wall so th this is like throwing the hat over the wall and then climbing over it and uh, I had some, so I did nutritional consulting in a more professional than just studies way and learned that. And then I was working in a dietetic center and there were binge eaters. Oh. So like bulimic, but not um, giving it away again. So they had 150 kilos or so. And one one day, one woman said, "Tell me, please, how I can stay. I lost my 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 weight, hundred and forty kilos. So yeah, I lost my weight three times. I know how to lose weight, but tell me how how I can stay there. And there were so many that really had life, uh, be it." right be it somebody died be it whatever and and then the nutritional habits went out of balance and so i i i realized it's not just giving them the right nutrition so so i started a body therapy training and um yeah, it was always like that. <laughs> so I come to, I come to a wall, and how how do I surmount that? How how do I get across? And then I learned that. So, and and also it's at that time I know I have to do it. It's it's kind of I don't care what you say. I have to do this, and I will find the money and. So, and then years later, I don't use that. For example, I, I, I give an example. I, I learned Reiki one and two. Mm -hmm. And the second, so I used it till I learned something where I don't have to do, do all, all the this in, in the symbols in, in, the, yeah. uh, in the air. Mm -hmm. But... So I know from, from a meditation, it's called Ishaya's Ascension, there is one attitude, one um, where I, within seconds, I'm in that contact and I can like distant healing, do that. So it's not that Reiki was bad, but it was a very big step towards that but now i have something that's quicker and faster and and more effective so but i don't but i'm so happy i learned that yeah well you know, this is uh this is so i'm i feel i'm i'm it, it's really hard to use the word efficiency but but it feels like faster quicker to what I really want and like now at the beginning uh, uh, when I learned it it's instant change is is like quantum healing and whatever I learned in yeah factored by I don't know so this this willingness to do it better and more effective more and to address exactly what i need right now so yeah so i collected quite a few certifications <laughs> for, <laughs> for, yeah i 
I have a license for therapy and uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 kind of. I think life throws at me all kinds of stuff and and how to deal with it in a better way. And I know I have become a better parent through that. And I don't think that my marriage with somebody so different from me, like my husband right now, uh, would have lasted. This was not possible um, if I didn't transform myself. So, so for me, it's, there is a mental part too, is to really understand what's going on. Um, and another one is to transform myself. And when I learned something, I really love to give it to other people to, mm -hmm. to pass it on. And um, my, yeah, I'm really good at one-on-one. I like, I'm, I'm a coach from basic to master. So like to be there with the people and really like my listening makes a difference. So that's nice. Yeah. Well, no, so this is a, <laughs> and I don't think that would change. So. Yeah, that would be my next question. What do you think how this will develop in the future going getting a little bit older every year? <laughs> yeah, I think for example, I looked at my I looked at my um thighs and felt like oh they're getting old, really getting old. And then I came across uh, 10x this this um resistance training. And I wanted to learn it. And um, so then I really did it. <laughs> so so my score, you don't have to know how that's uh, calculated, but, but my score was 1.6 at the beginning and my highest, so I, I'm a little sloped back, but uh, was eight. Okay. And they say after seven, it's fit, you're fit. So. Mm -hmm. And I can see my my muscles transform. I lost weight, and and so it was really like to learn it, to really intellectually learn how my body works, and then to apply it. And I think even if I was in a wheelchair, I would do Joe Dispenza or whatever to to if not transform my body, but to be able to be with what life throws at me and 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 be happy with that. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> nice. So we have something in common there, Gertrude. Um, I actually did the Reiki levels up to Reiki Master. And then at some point, uh, I did the a quantum healing and that was the transition too, was taking it from, well, I'll call the slow symbol method, which mm -hmm. feels like, uh, like, uh, like your crutch that you need, but later when you do quantum, you know, you don't need the crutch anymore. So it's good for learning like a, like a child's walker, but uh, for later it, uh, yeah, the quantum was quite fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I think quantum in general is fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. And now we put some factors on that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wonder if you can explain what you mean with quantum healing. I think most people don't know and I don't either. So you might uh, explain a little bit to both of you. Um, OK, I'll give the I'll give the amateur version. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. So in my amateur version, uh, you you don't do the symbols. Uh, you set an intention and you're, you allow your intuition to take you to where, for, when I was learning, where we, where we needed to touch. 
And then we just stayed in the moment and we touched and it was like, you were focused on sending energy from yourself to that person to either diagnose and then try to heal. Uh, but from a distance perspective, it's more like you connect with the person as if, as if you're calling them on the phone, you're like reach out uh, spiritually. And then for me, I do sometimes a body scan or I just sort of feel about where does, where does it need to be? And I'm purposely sending uh, energy to them and then receiving uh, information back about what they need or how they're feeling. And not everybody, it's not necessarily about curing, but sometimes it's just about understanding. Um, so for instance, if someone has liver cancer, you're like, okay, we're, we're at liver, are we? And, and you just sort of, you accept it for what it is. Maybe you can do something about it, maybe you can't, but um, just sometimes embracing people uh, with, with love and protection is sometimes uh, where I end up. So that's my, my primary. Yeah, would, I, I can resonate pretty much with that and and for me it was a little slightly different so what we did is really to take out what's not working <laughs> so like energetically take out what's not working and then reach into the field and let that quality the so you set the intention to bring power to bring love to bring whatever quality is needed to to this, um, to the liver, <laughs> to the whatever that might be. And uh, now in um, instant change, it's, yeah, about that, like, uh, primal energy, the, 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 whatever that quantum field is, but this, like the, and into um, what do you call it? Verstärken. Reinforcement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And enforce this by five hundred thousand or so to. And this is the energy that all the time, all the 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 photons they always go through us so it's it's like always coming from above through us and you reinforce it and you set the intention what you want to bring in and this washes away what what's hindering behind the blockages to to melt that away and so, uh, it's really like I had a knee problem and somebody was working with me. <laughs> and right after that, I went into the basement to bring the, the laundry there and it was still hurting. And two, two hours later, I wanted to, to take it out of the washing machine and, and went upstairs and was gone. <laughs> so it, it was really... There's some very interesting things happening. Yeah, and this is the quantum, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the quantum field, and and so on. Because yeah. I was wondering what quantum theory, um, as quantum, uh, quanta is very small, and uh, people say a quantum leap and mean a big one. So I was always a little bit confused about that. No, this, this is like a quantum is just not just one. It's a whole field that, that really goes through us all day long and it's not specific. And, and that what we do is to specify it and to really set the intention. And if this person says, yes, I want to change that, then there is a whole field that that reinforces that mm -hmm. and takes out what doesn't doesn't fit what doesn't work with it that's interesting yeah so when we think about people who might listen to this afterwards uh what would you say i mean people in our age so we are talking about uh, 
Ay, 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 ay. Excuse me. Excuse me, you talk. I have to get the dog. Okay. <laughs> I, I I have I <clears throat> thing that helps me is I have a friend who who's curious as well and and he has a brilliant mind and so he has lent me quantum books uh, I think I first started playing with it in the holographic universe book um, but just appreciating that what we perceive as real is only as we make it and you know when I said to one person once they were hiding behind a chair I said you realize there's more space in the chair than there is matter right you do know that so what's the chair going to do for you? Um, but it's, it's, it's so hard to hold two belief systems at the same time. But what I appreciate from quantum is that it's not stable in that the observed, you by observing something, you change it. And the observed, it changes you. And it's this back and forth. And it's a moment in time, but then it's the next moment. So uh, I think the concepts are difficult to explain, but um, there's some really, I can't remember his name, but the British fellow who I think does a pretty good job of explaining it. But the other aspect is the, the physical aspect of what we're now calling the microtubules, which I don't know if you're familiar with microtubules. Very, like, I will just call it the tiniest thing we've been able to find yet in ourselves and how they communicate, because there's communication and uh, how they help us sense and and this is also how trees can talk to each other and plants can talk to each other and we can talk uh, in our bodies and the university here has one of two microscopes they can see a microtubule but that opens a whole new world of understanding healing and sickness and not not our conventional conventional i don't know if you've ever watched uh, star trek where the doc says good lord jim these people are using knives you know <laughs> it's what it feels like we're transitioning from uh, a very primitive form of viewing our health and our ability to heal to more of the star trek where he takes his little one and goes oh yes okay there you go now you're fine it's not such a leap when when you get into quantum healing yeah and, and what what's interesting that if we look at an atom then we have this the uh, matter is just zero point zero 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 six zeros and a one uh compared to the space in yeah. which the 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 nuclear and the the um electrons so if i have my thumbnail and this is the the nucleus and then all around germany switzerland and austria are the electrons and and so this is really like it's energy the rest <laughs> yeah, pretty much Let's, it's exactly. inform information and um, um yeah energy and 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 what we do in what we do in normal circumstances or so we work on the 0 0.001 to to make things work like uh, normal medicine or so they give you a pill or they fix the broken arm or so and it's very good to to have that but the rest <laughs> and that's where we are working with quantum healing really like to to change that energy field and and Joe Dispenza is, is also somebody who is really doing a lot of research in, in this, in this uh, field. And it's about getting to a high energy level, like to, to have elevated emotions like love and uh, joy and, and the others, they, they bring you 
more and more to that more meta related field mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and so really like consciously <laughs> to go into this I want to have gratitude I want to have love in my life I want to have uh joy and uh focus and yeah so and and so you you more and more get drawn to to this when you yeah when you look at all the war things or so what you said Heidi being drawn into a, a rabbit hole this is an energetic process that brings you down to to that more meta like area yeah and to lift us up that that's the most important part and to set that intention and to be connected I, to those i agree but i think both is Im, Im, important no as we know from integral going down into into the shadows and then going up into it is it's timely because i i'm both listening to all these uh, talks about um quantum physics and there was the image if you take out the space in your in your body no between the, mm. the nucleus yeah. and so, what would be left from you would be like this <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah yeah it's incredible yeah. not to think about it <laughs> yeah but would you say it's not that you look at those but if you go with the energy, if you go with the downward emotions, then you're drawn into this and and it's hard to get out of it. But if you you observe and and be with your awareness and say, oh, interesting. Exactly. This is and you know, then it's it's different, I think. Exactly. And we have planned for next Sunday for the salon to talk about that. This time, last time yesterday or when it was, we talked about the, the, the things which are going on and our attitude to that. And next time we want to talk, how are we uh, in the face of uh, how do we deal it? And yeah. I already thought from my own experience, it is also there is a development because I noticed at the beginning, completely immersed in these things and then slowly you come out and go into the observer position and i realize when for instance i fall back into the melting with a topic then my heart begins to do this uh, story yeah. and i do yeah. the, the breathing and i notice oh okay <laughs> you were now identified with or too much touched by it you know i mean yeah, it's good to be touched because not to see it neutral when you think about thousands and thousands of people dying, but not not being melted into it, you know. And this, I think, is also a process of capacity yeah. to, to, to develop. And I don't think what many people do is to avoid going into this. That's It's, it's not a good alternative. I think you have to go through this... <sighs> very difficult moment of realizing uh, uh, and then develop a capacity a resilience of 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 handling these things listening to these things and not getting uh destroyed let's say by by horrible mm -hmm. things. And yeah. that's one of the things i'm about learning you know at the moment i'm i am learning another learning aspect <laughs> of life yeah yeah, and, and it's not working to to pour pink sauce over what's not working. <laughs> no, no, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, okay. it's, it's also in relationship. I mean, you have to address certain things to to make it work. But I think the, the intention is also like, do you want to to go there for fear mongering? Do you want to go there for blaming? Do you want to go there for all these negative feelings? Or do you want to observe it to be clear what's, what's so, and then to look what is your part in making it better or exactly. transforming it? Exactly, and raising consciousness altogether. You mm -hmm. know, my own, and if possible also, 
helping yeah. other people to, to yeah. that, definitely that is my intention and not being <laughs> entering into depression because of the horribleness of the world you know so yeah 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 nice yeah, yeah, and to, to dig end. deeper and to learn more, this is just a joy. I mean, it's not, it's, I don't know. It's like, I I, I was I was in charge of four nursing homes and we had uh, like uh, people that were in charge of the, the cleaning ladies and so. And in one of those houses, there was one who was five years younger than me at that time. And I offered her a place in to um, like to, um, what do you call it? House, um, so who are in charge of cleaning, um, laundry and things like that. And to learn that professionally and have a certification. And she said, oh no, I'm too old. I'm." <laughs> I mean, she was like 40, 45. Oh, cool. yeah, so, and, <laughs> and, and then I gave it to somebody else and she said, you know, she was so happy. And, and I was so shocked. I mean, she was really five years younger than me. And, and, and she got it for free and she could, could just, one day in the week she could just learn everything and and i couldn't understand that but she just didn't want to so that's one i the reason i laughed is because uh i've been putting together my research proposal and when i when i talk about ageism i talk about not just how people treat you but how you treat yourself and the fact that we have an i don't know if you have it in germany but we say you can't teach an old dog new tricks and we believe that, and so we don't bother. And so we don't bother teaching older people. We assume how older people learn. And you don't. You think it's too late. And then you focus on the denigration of your health uh, versus the, you know, the the as you say, the joy that comes from learning and and even learning how to be a healthier adult. Um, but we had that's... a, a seventy year, seventy nine year old in the training last year in the fitness training. Yeah. Oh, Noreen uh, Laubscher from South Africa. Yeah. She was 83 and did her PhD with 83. Unfortunately, yeah, I, I might that. do that. <laughs> no reason not to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no I to. interrupted you, Gina. No, no, but... you didn't. I was, I was just adding on that that's, that's the funny story. That's the part of the dance is what is the belief system. And as soon as you take away that belief system and substitute another one, some people, you know, the cycle of adoption, it's the early adopters and then a few more. But once you get about 17%, you're pretty much off to the races. And what we're seeing is uh, the creation of a standard for age-friendly universities. So to be able to embrace all ages, so not just uh, older adults, but just creating a whole different experience and the richness that comes with intergenerational learning uh, in a different format other than just in the family. Because I think we used to learn a lot within family. Uh, and now that we're separated, we don't tend to think about passing down. Like, do you know how to do this? Have you, do you know how to, do you know how to sew in a button? I mean, there's a simple little thing. Pe do people sew in buttons anymore? Mm -hmm. But an interesting canning and COVID, all of a sudden everybody wants to learn how to can again. So, mm. anyways, I think it's I think it's uh, it, you have to treat it with a little bit of playfulness. Uh, your own life experiences, even the the darker ones, like uh, you go down the rabbit hole, you go that was fun, and then you come back, take a look around, and have a little laugh about what you've learned, or even tear about what you've learned, and and then just go on, keep going. I mean, that's really what we have to do. I don't one of those enlightened masters <laughs> she said um we're here to expand love and learning yeah and I think people who don't want to learn either have the false beliefs which you were saying or in childhood they have to be so put down in this desire to learn because children want to learn and mm -hmm. when from the very beginning it is 
pushed mm -hmm. down, then they might not be able to recover this uh, enthusiasm of learning something new. And that's really a shame. I mm -hmm. feel very yeah. sorry for, for people who have lost this capacity. Because I imagine that life must be very boring, very gray, <laughs> and everything like that when you have no new excitement about learning something new, mm -hmm. discovering something new, which mm -hmm. you know before. I mean, I have to say, when I was 27 and in a marriage and uh, horrible things, I mean, I really thought I'm old. And uh, there was the moment of liberation where I prepared for the liberation when I thought, if this is life, no. <laughs> so, you know, and that really pushed me out and discover many, many things. And I ended up here and still discovering every day. So, <laughs> ladies, we Thank are you. at the end of our hour was very nice to see you both together and also Gertra that you came back again. And hopefully we'll, next time we'll be a bit more crowded in this room. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I was family yeah. absorbed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know everybody has something that's good. Yeah. But an a, 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 a conversation in three is also nice, you know, because when there are six or seven people, then that's uh, different dynamics and so I love it too. So thank you. And maybe a short check out. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say John Kehoe. I don't know if he's still living. So he might be 90. <laughs> if I I had a um I had a uh, workshop with him, which was phenomenal. Who is that? Who is that? John Kehoe. I put him in the chat. Oh, and okay. he has written some books, the the mind mind <laughs> everything about mind so he was one of the first to 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 do this work and he has written quantum warrior and and junkie he, he, you see him sitting there on a chair an old man i mean you really see that he's old his he's kind of um skinny like an old man yeah. not so much and then he stands up and is starting to teach. And he was jumping over, <laughs> over the stage. And he was like, <laughs> and, and he he told us he was healing himself from the future. So he was going into his future life and in the healthy ver version of it, and then said, what do I need right now to fix my, because he couldn't move, his back was so in pain. And he said he did that for an hour or two. So to, to really ask his future self what he needs to do. And then he got up and was good. Amazing. So I learned quite a bit from him about quantum field and yeah. So that's what I wanted to add because I put him in the chat. Thanks. Ah. Gina, take out words. Um, just thank you. A pleasure to meet you, Gertrude. And uh, I enjoyed our conversation. And I always think this is a magic in three. And uh, the other thing I like to say is that the right people show up at the right time. So this that's how I see the three and it was very enjoyable. So thank you, Heidi. And mm -hmm. thank you, Richard. And thank you both of you. And I just uh, got uh, ordered, it's not yet arrived, the book from this, I think it's called Ulrich Warnke. Mm -hmm. And uh, three books, one of it is Quantum uh, Theory oh. and Spirituality. And so I'm very curious about that. And maybe we talk Great. another time. Yeah, we can talk about that. Okay. Have a good evening. Have a good day for you, Gina. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.